Haberler.com'dan merhaba. Ben Esra Öztürk. Gündemimiz yine Afganistan ve Taliban. Taliban ülkeyi ele geçirdiğinden bu yana ülkede korku hakim. Ancak korkanların başında şüphesiz kadınlar ve kız çocukları geliyor. Çok önemli bir isim sorularımıza yanıt verecek. Afganistan'ın İlk ve en genç kadın belediye başkanı Zerifa Gafiri yayınımıza katılacak. Afganistan'dan ayrılmak zorunda kaldı. Nasıl bir süreç geçirdi, ölüm tehditleri aldığını söyledi Taliban'dan, evinin arandığını söyledi. E, bu yönde de meçleri oldu. Ms. Zerifa Gafiri, thank you for joining me. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope you're safe and sound. Yeah, uh, yeah thankfully I'm safe with all my family. Uh, I remember that when uh, Taliban started to Uh, take over the country, um, you were tweeting even while the ministers and the president Ghani were fleeing the country, you declared that you will stay and um, you will struggle against the Taliban. So tell us what happened. Why did you have to flee? Uh, yeah, I wanted to say, I wanted to be there. But uh, just because of they were searching for me uh, all around, they started searching for me from my house, and then they took my car away. They beat my bodyguards. They took their weapons away. They were searching for me all my like at the, all my relatives' house, my friends' house, and everyone were like so afraid. And uh, with the all I saw, I was like. Uh, not uh, really worried about, uh, you know, getting killed or being died. Uh, while I was like, uh, you know, I wasn't afraid of that. But at the moment there, I had a responsibility to my family, to my mom, to my sibling. And more important, if I was uh, there, the device that can change the situation, the device can, that can help me Um, change at least the the fate of other people at the in regarding the women of Afghanistan and the situation on going on ground. When Taliban came in Kabul, the first thing they did was to erase the uh, women pictures on the walls in the streets. Uh, and now look at the propaganda, looking at the propaganda they're making all over the world. Uh, they're declaring a general amnesty to all Afghans and declaring um, a free education to all women releasing footages that uh, kids, uh, girls, are entering school. Um, what, what do you say? What do you say? I mean, you experienced living in Afghanistan uh, uh, for, for the whole actually, of your first life. Actually, first of all, I need to say that there are Taliban and they, like, you know, tell we don't have a like, proper, well-governed government. Uh, we ask our women to not to come out of their houses. They need to stay there. Uh, and secondly, the most important, it was like the first day that they came up to Kabul, they started, you know, collecting women from the streets and they were beating evil one. They started beating women on the street. They started searching women to kill them. And I was one of them. I was one of uh, those women who, do, uh, which they were like uh, trying to kill, and they were like searching for it. So did Taliban I, catch I, you? I really did Taliban catch you, Zarifa? Sorry. Did Taliban catch you? Did you come face to face uh, with they numbers? They were able. They were able because if one like it was all the government, they were able to catch me. Well, just rather than I was walking all my way, I was hiding myself place to place and I was changing my uh, locations every day and every night. Uh, I was hiding to my uh, mom's relatives' houses. I was hiding to my dad's relatives' houses. And I was I was hiding in a place where I was never been there, in a house where I was, I was never been there and I knew no one of their houses. I was I was I had to walk more than more than 20 and 30 kilometers per day per day because of uh, you know hiding myself from Taliban and uh, because they couldn't catch me. Uh, all the all the journey, at least especially these four or five days in Saint Kabul, was the journey of faith, like uh, uh, like uh, pain. 
uh, the journey of uh, you know the the, the the the grief, the journey of uh, a pen, which like is not a like uh, it's not something to explain it. A pen, which is really really something to not uh, you know to not being able of um, talking of it. A pen, which I, I really you know. Uh, all in my life before this few days, I, I was telling everyone that maybe I won't face any pain, painful rather than my dad said. But I faced, I faced that pain. The pain was destroying, you know, seeing destroying your, destroy your country. The pain of, you know, uh, putting your sick mom on the bed back of you and then uh, leaving her so yeah this was the pain that was more painful of losing my dad was more painful of my dad said to me and uh, I think uh, I can't explain it more than this like, it was it was always so hard uh, you have uh, your uh, counterparts uh, from other provinces and uh, other cities uh, who are uh, female mayors. What about them? Do you have any information uh, what they are doing? Are they fleeing uh, the country? And tell us why uh, the Taliban targets you. Uh, first of all, I need to say that all those women who were working in the uh, government and who were working for the government or maybe were allies, uh, they are not safe, they are all in danger. Taliban are killing you, one of them, by one by one, searching them house by house. Secondly, why Taliban are killing me is just because of my vice, it's just because of my strength of standing for my country and people, it's just because of uh, uh, the, you know, being so clear to the point and direct to the point and being so, so open for my people in my country. They want to kill me too, so there won't be any other Zarifa to raise advice against them. They want to kill me because they won't, if I die, there won't be any other woman to stand their ground so strongly against them. Uh, and more important, it's not only me, they killed my dad to stop me, and they were able to kill anyone else of my family to stop me. Uh, and my journey, is also uh, and the journey that I have been, you know, starting nowadays. It was also, first of all, it was so important to keep my to make my family feel safe and keep them in a safe place, so uh, they won't be able to harm them to stop me. So now they are safe, and uh, I think uh, I I have to get back to my ground, but. Uh, before standing my ground inside the country, I, I need I need to raise the flag of women's rights, women's rights, women's wars, wars, and and then the wars of those unspoken women who are still standing powerful and who are seeking at least humanitarian, uh, you know, uh, uh, beliefs and powers and then trust of other women around the world. So, be, like before. Uh, Going back to my country is my, my biggest mission, and I'm I'm working for that. And why Taliban could make it so easily? It was like just and why they were whatever they were doing it now is just a propaganda. If they were really giving a a, a penny attention to women and women's rights, they were not searching me. They were not trying to kill me. They were not attacking me more than three times. They were not killing my dad. They were not making me leave my country, the country who was like, which was more, more, more important, and which was more person and like lovable than my mom to me always. I took my mom out of that country, but I couldn't, I, I couldn't like leave. I couldn't live. I couldn't uh, stay fine and calm because I, I think. Uh, I, I left something more precious than my mouth there in, in, in my back. Well, Ms. Khafiri, uh, you're now 27 years old and you grew up during the uh, American intervention in Afghanistan. Tell us uh, how do you feel about that? Are you uh, pro-American? Why are you uh, 
targeted uh, in this way. I mean, you didn't you didn't uh, grow up in a radical uh, environment, yeah. So you don't know how it was. Indeed, you didn't experience a um, Taliban Afghanistan. Now, um, tell us what was the situation while uh, you were growing up, while you were uh, getting into the politics of Afghanistan, and um, tell us why uh, the period from now on will be bad days for your people? Um, from my childhood, I just remember that uh, I was going to an underground uh, school, a class, teached by a woman, for, by a lady, and there were, I was just maybe five years old, and there was so young ladies with me. We are going to the, we were going to that uh, underground uh, like a basement class. So when we were hearing some steps just nearby our apartment, we were hiding our notebooks and books under carpet so no one like if they came in, they come in, they won't be able to get what exactly we are doing. I I just remember that if I was doing like you know if I was walking with my grandma. Uh, and uh, I was like trying to, uh, like you know, being s a little bit naughty or maybe so naughty for her. So she was like, you know, making like, um, don't do this, otherwise Taliban will come and take you to the jail. So yeah, this was. Uh, uh, this is all I remember from that time. I, this is all like, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Dead Sea Couple, the so quiet city, the so quiet market, market with no nothing rather than small shops and so few people around it. I don't remember anything else. It was all from the Taliban, I remember. But uh, when I grew up and I, I read, I started reading books and, and history, I got that there are uh, yeah, they were more, more, more cruel. But whatever they are now, it's more, more than that time, and it's it's really uh, worse than that time. Uh, uh, now, now I think uh, it's it's the worst one as now because uh, that time they were ha not having like you know best supply and everything. Not at that much that they are having it now. They are having receiving a big amount of support from Pakistan and Pakistani intelligence group. Uh, they are receiving direct support by Pakistan government. Pakistan's government is running a proxy war inside Afghanistan by the entrance and by the existence of Taliban in Afghanistan. Uh, and more important, it's not only those Taliban who have been, uh, you know, engaged with ISIN and the like the main Taliban, but nowadays it's like those people are also going to Taliban, uh, which are afraid of their life out of Taliban. Those people are also going to Taliban, which are um, at the past they were busy with small robberies, with uh, you know kidnappings and all those. So nowadays, like we are having four, three, four types of Taliban. And the more important, what they are talking on media, like they're, first of all, I'm, I'm really not sure Zabiul Lam Mujahid is the same Zabiul Lam Mujahid, which was making his statements at the back of, uh, you know, uh, uh, camera. But still, like whoever he is, but whatever he is saying, it's just so good to make it, uh, like, you know, to write it in paper or to read it back. It's nothing on action. We are seeing all those women and men have traveling to their offices and being stopped by Taliban to not enter the gate. And uh, like uh, just at the second day of the fall of Kabul, my uh, I asked my uh, uh, I asked my assistant to go to my office and bring some uh, documents for me from there. So, I, uh, you know, uh, when he wanted to enter office the, uh, the, the, at the gate, there were some Taliban. The response that he received, he was receiving was that 20 years you people weren't here and you governed and you, like, you know, earned money. 
But now it's our time, let us to do it. So yeah, Taliban are not chained and have a lover and whatever they, they are doing or saying is just words and it's so so beautiful to write it and I keep it on a, on a big high. Ms. Khafari, what do you think about uh, American intervention? Uh, what do you say? Uh, were there no civilian killings? Were there no so-called accidental killings of Afghan people? Uh, what about uh, the Afghan government who cooperated with um, the U.S. presence there? What do you think about that? Okay, uh, let's not to you know not be so uh, like so negative about it. At that time, when I was uh, like you know at the Taliban during the Taliban regime, I wasn't able like I wasn't thinking of being a mayor someday. But with the invasion of U.S. and international allies and international community, we at least got the, uh, the the flow and opportunity to be what we are now. Uh, it is something so clear. And if we were not having these changes or this invasion, I'm I'm sure we were not. At least I was not able to speak to you today so so so well and clearly. Uh, but yeah, there were some mistakes being made. The, there were uh, uh, problems on the ground. Uh, and more important, for two days of Palestine's problems, I blame everyone. I blame US, I blame internet, U, uh, Western countries, Euro, uh, Asian countries, I blame uh, Afghan politician, international politician, I blame Ghani, I blame Abdullah, I blame Karzai, more, more, more Karzai and Abdullah, uh, and more than Karzai, Abdullah, because he was leading the, the peace negotiations and he felt so clearly, he felt the negotiation and he was, the, and he is responsible one for two days of Palestine, more responsible one, because he felt managing negotiation on table. So yeah, I, I, bl more, I blame Afghan people as well, I blame civilians as well, the, the, um, the, the um, armed people of Afghanistan, because it's uh, like, you know, uh, why Taliban are so powerful is just because uh, they know that no one, like, uh, you know, uh, no one is able to talk against them. They know that everyone in Afghanistan are just afraid of their lives or maybe their position or maybe their money or maybe their uh, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's always like, it's always so, so. Uh, horrible, but yeah, I, I, I blame you. Well, Ms. Khalifa, let's talk about the latest Afghanistan uh, government. S th there's a fact that the Taliban didn't uh, come from the middle of nowhere, right? So uh, there was an agreement uh, with the U.S. Uh, in the previous year, and the current, I mean, the previous Afghan government knew about that, and they were in touch with the Taliban. Um, do you criticize uh, your previous government um, thinking that maybe the people, the Afghan people, should have been informed that there should be, uh, there will be uh, such a transformation? So it, it could give some room to people do what they want, flee the country or go somewhere else uh, or, you know, um, stay in peace talks, blah, um, blah. Like Overall, whatever happened, everyone is just responsible for it. And yeah, uh, the people who are fleeing out of Afghanistan, uh, they are those who are taking just two steps back to, uh, you know, like uh, like all those angry, uh, angry tigers who are able to, who are taking two steps back to being able uh, attack. So powerful uh, like a hate so yeah we are all just that and like uh, Taliban was not relative of Afghanistan and they will not be able to be the rails of Afghanistan and they are not uh, like they are not yeah it happened at the middle of it but yeah why at the middle of it because uh, because uh, we have a bad bad bad and a bad neighbor like Pakistan just close to us what do you think about uh Europe's EU's stance and the uh, United States uh, taking back the troops 
leaving uh, the Afghan forces uh, alone. For that, I can't blame only U.S. Everyone, like you know, left us alone. Turkey government also left us alone. And unfortunately, we had an announcement of if, uh, like you know, there is a government of Taliban, so Turkish government is ready to work with. So I think this is more worse than whatever U.S. or Western countries said it. First of all, let's start looking at ourselves, at the mirror that we are trying others to stand just in front of it. Uh, there's another question. Should the U.S. Uh, ever be there at all? Uh, it's not about U.S. When a Muslim country, like Turkish, is not able to do whatever like we need as a Muslim partner from them, I don't think that U.S. or Western countries have to do it because we are so close. We have so close relations. It's not now since Atatürk and Amanullah. We have the relations, and now see, Turkish government is ready to uh, work with Taliban and saying like the Taliban is this, the Talibani Islam is the same Islam that we are having it in Turkey. So I think. Uh, Who said uh, that? It is something. Are you referring to the president Erdogan? Uh, it is something so so horrible, and I wish I are wish you, uh, whoever says this. Are you referring to says, President Erdogan? Maybe Erdogan or whoever else. Uh, I wish them to send their family members, at least their daughters, once to Afghanistan and let them live under the Taliban regime. So if they are able to do this. I'm definitely sure uh, they are like, uh, they, if they do this, they won't be able to make the statements uh, out like this. And more importantly, when when a Muslim country like Turkish is not doing that the way that uh, they need to do as a Muslim brother of, uh, like, you know, a long last friend of the country like Afghanistan. So I'm not expecting Western countries and US countries. I was just checking what the president uh, Erdogan I'm, I'm said really uh, at all. Uh, uh, so, if, if I'm, I'm so sorry, if I, I'm so sorry, I have just one minute left. I have another appointment. Okay. Just one minute, if it's possible, please. Yeah. Okay. I just want to uh, double check what exactly President Erdogan uh, told. He told uh, the belief of uh, Taliban is uh, not... He said the same thing. No, no not the same thing. You know, can't, something yeah, not the same thing, but it is like that. It he, is uh, like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he, the he words are changed. That. We the words, in are, the words are not the same. The words are not the same. But yeah, it means that. Okay. So uh, I want to give my last question because you're running out yeah. of time. What will the Afghan woman do from now on? or uh, the uh, activists and human rights uh, advocates like yourself, how will you help uh, Afghan women from now on, from the places um, where you flee? Uh, we struggled 20 years and now we are in a square. But being in a square doesn't mean that what you, we, like, uh, we don't know what to do. We know what to do. We know how to defend our rights, our country, our people. No one is able to govern Afghanistan now without women, especially educated women of Afghanistan, the new generation of Afghanistan, generation of women, generation, my generation, and the generation who is often me. So yeah, uh, now we are we are fighting back, and more important, it's my clear message to all leaders of Taliban. If you really believe, especially, I uh, my message is directly to Mullah Batullah, the leader of Taliban, and I'm really I am really shocked where he is and why he is not out. He's not coming out, and he's not like at least talking to us because I'm I'm directly calling on him and asking him, let's talk, let's talk to me. I'm ready to take the responsibility and come over all my grief of losing my father, lose like trace of my life, everything. I'm ready to talk to you. Come out, let's talk because if you kill, I don't know how many more you are gonna kill. You kill one, we send two. Uh, you kill two, there will be a resistance of three more back so strong on the ground. So uh, it's not numbers, it's powers, it's beliefs, it's thoughts. Uh, Ms. Zarifa Ghaferi, thank you for joining me. It's very hard time uh, for you and your nation. I wish peace. 
Thank you for coming on. Thank you so much. Uh, Afganistan'ın ilk kadın ve en genç belediye başkanı Zarifa Gafer'i konuğumuz oldu. Şu anda ismini vermek istemediği bir Avrupa ülkesine kaçmış durumda. Ee, korumalarına saldırdıklarını, korumalarının silahlarını elinden aldığını, evlerini e, aradıklarını ailesiyle tüm akrabalarıyla birlikte e, açıkladı. Günde 20-30 kilometre yürümek zorunda kalıyordum. E, Taliban'dan kaçmak, gizlenmek için dedi. Çarpıcı açıklamaları oldu. Çok da e, zor bir durum geçirdiğini anlattı. Çocukluğundan bugüne neler yaşadı? Afganistan'da neler yaşandı? Nasıl bir dönüşüm yaşandı? Bunları konuşmaya çalıştık. Alt yazılı olarak izlediniz. Teşekkürler. Hoşçakalın.